invited to hear these words of reflection and prayer. On this night, we remember and reflect. On this night, we eat and rejoice. On this night, we pray and grieve. On this night, we remember and reflect. Let us pray. Loving God, we come into your presence with gratitude and joy, even as we face our memories of sorrow and loss. We remember, with gratitude, the traditions of our faith, the ancient stories that bind us together, and the people of God who lovingly served others, that we might know your saving love. Inspire us anew with the memory of that Passover meal when Jesus shared his last night with his friends, offering himself in servanthood and love. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Call upon the Lord, for God will surely hear your prayer. Merciful God, release the ropes that bind us. Lift us from the fears that bury us. Save each and every one of us from the troubles and trials that separate us from you and from one another. Save us, O God, that we may serve the world with confidence and love. God of grace and mercy, give heed to the prayers that we bring before you now.
The New Testament reading is from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 23 through 26. I received a tradition from the Lord, which I also handed on to you. On the night on which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, This I, my body for which is for you, do this to remember me. He did the same thing with the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do this to remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you broadcast the death of the Lord until he comes. Good evening, beloved. We welcome you to this worship experience that we are sharing on Holy Thursday. It's also known as Maundy Thursday. Maundy comes from the Latin word for mandate. Jesus tells us, among other things, to gather for Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, together as his disciples. So I wonder if you've ever been to a Seder meal, a Jewish Seder meal. I've been through several through the years, but the most memorable ones took place for me as I was an associate in Memphis. We had a man from the synagogue that would come every year and host a, a Seder meal. So if, if you've ever been to one, you know that the meal tells the story, the story of God's people. It's fascinating. Right there on the plate, all of the elements, each of the items on the plate tell the story. There's unleavened bread or the flat bread that we use that represents not having time for the, for the bread to rise in the story. There's a lamb shank depicting the blood of the lamb that was smeared over the doorposts. The bitter herb, horseradish, that depicts uh, wandering in the wilderness. So each element that's on the plate, each item of food, tells the story of God's deliverance. What was fascinating is the whole meal is conducted in present tense. We, we were delivered from Egypt. And so there's a great sense of identity and the sharing of the meal is shared story. In his letter to the Corinthian church, the Apostle Paul tells the story of another meal that also shares the story of deliverance, this time through Jesus Christ. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. In Paul's direct revelation from Christ, apparently Jesus, the risen Jesus, shared with Paul the instructions for disciples to receive and participate in this holy meal. He said, on the night in which Christ gave himself up for us when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, the cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. So Paul says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You participate in the story. So Paul shares that with the Corinthian church and others. Jesus gave himself for us and to us. Take the bread, share the cup, do this in remembrance of me. In Christian theology and practice, we believe that when we gather in the name of Christ and do this in remembrance of him, the living presence of Christ is with us, just as he promised. Gosh, this is such a historically different year, a national emergency, a health crisis, 
and all of the patterns of our life have been disrupted. And so here we are in Holy Week, experiencing it once again, not being able to gather as the church. But yet, even the physical distance of celebrating this Holy Week separately in our own homes, even that physical distance cannot separate us from one another in Christ. We are bound together in Christ. As the liturgy says, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, is it not a sharing in Christ? We hope that in your own way, Hopefully on this very night, Holy Thursday, you will gather around your own table and share bread and the cup and do this in remembrance of Him. Maybe for the first time in our history, we are sharing Holy Communion remotely. It's very unusual. The bishop has given us authority to do this. Yet in this historical crisis, as we gather in the name of Christ and we bless, we break, we take, we eat and drink, all of these normal things that you hear when we are gathered, it is a receiving of the grace of God through Christ our Lord, who was with us, in us, and for us. As we share this meal in separate places this very unique year, it is a sharing in the story and the living reality of Christ. As always, the meal tells the story. Again, the liturgy says it so well, by your spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. We are one in Christ. Tonight, this holy meal on this holy Thursday tells the story how Christ died on the cross for us, how Christ is with us, in us, and for us, We remember tonight how Jesus went from the upper room where he was gathered at table and he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He is filled with agony and grief. He asks God the Father, if this cup of suffering can pass from me, please let it be so. But if not, not my will but thy will be done. The meal helps us remember the sacrificial giving of Jesus' lifeblood, his lifeblood for us. As we receive the cup and the bread, we receive the blood and body of Christ. The meal tells the story and we all get to share it. In 1913, a pastor's daughter was bleeding profusely from her nose. Doctors were running out of options. In desperation, they tried a new procedure. It was a blood transfusion. It had rarely been attempted. The pastor stretched out on the living room floor of his parsonage in Michigan. And his little daughter was beside him on the couch. Her name was Agnes. So for for one of the very first times, his blood flowed from him to her. Was transferred from him to his daughter. Agnes was one of the very first ones to receive this procedure, a blood transfusion in the state of Michigan a hundred years ago. 
the local paper carried the headline, Minister Saves the Life of Daughter by Giving Blood. Unfortunately, the hemorrhaging returned about two weeks later, and Agnes died. This time, his father lay in the floor, consumed with grief. He cried out with the words of the psalmist, My flesh and my heart may fail, but he was choked up with emotion. But then he gathered his strength, his hope, his faith, and he finished the affirmation. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Eventually, that procedure, a blood transfusion, became a very common life-saving tool, as we know. It's even, even being used with uh, the pandemic, transferring plasma from one person who's experienced the illness to another in hopes of healing. So a blood transfusion was life-saving. As we share this holy meal tonight, on this historic Holy Thursday, we do so in remembrance of Him. The meal tells the story. It's a story of a blood transfusion that became a life infusion for us. And it still does. Jesus gives his life for us. He chose the cup of suffering for us. And when we receive the bread and cup in his name, we receive Christ. He is with us, in us, and for us. So take, eat, do this in remembrance of me, Jesus said. It is the story of grace. It is our story. And may we share it on this holy night. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
past number of weeks have been challenging and different for all of us, but yet here we are, standing behind the table in these elements, prepared to share in the great thanksgiving and in holy communion with one another and with you. You are invited to participate in this holy practice on this holy evening uh, in, the, in the fashion where you are now. So as you hear this invitation to a communion, I hope that you will take it into your hearts and allow God to speak to you and to be a part of your practice where you are, in your homes or wherever that might be. So hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Tonight, though we are not together, we do share here at the table of grace. So hear these words of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When he had turned aside from your way, when we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift, emptying himself that our joy might be full. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorn and forgotten, washed the disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he broke the bread, and gave thanks to you, and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, gathered everywhere, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, and with your people, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you and shared at the table of grace, and the blood of Christ, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins, and promises of a new life.
Will you pray with us? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may, by the power of your Spirit, go out into the world and give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Holy Thursday service. We pray that it was meaningful for you and your families. As we end tonight, we will remind you uh, that Friday we will be observing our Good Friday service at 7 p.m. here on our YouTube channel or however you might like to take that in. Uh, but again, thank you. We, pray, we are continuing to pray for you throughout this holy, uh, this holy week, and we look forward to the joys of Easter. Uh, but until then, we do rest our hearts on the passion of Jesus knowing where the next steps take us, what that means for what it looks like here, and also what it means for our hearts in preparation for our celebration. So may the love of God be with you, the communion of the Holy Spirit keep us tied together, and the love of Christ be above all. Go in peace. Amen.